there they are. The whole crew. Here we are. So, you know, we should be back on a weekly basis without a break for, you know, a while. We might have some folks dip in and out of the four regulars, but we're here together for the first time in a century. What did you do on your summer vacation, Blaine? Celebrated birthdays. My daughter had a birthday party. I remember that being the big reason why we took a break and I started back to work. So I readied that. What about y'all? Anything fun? Define I mean, fun. Donovan currently has COVID for the I first COVID. time. And, uh, That's really exciting ever. for me. Yeah, my first time ever. First COVID. Sometimes I've, I've sh- wondered before, like, have I had COVID and I just didn't know it? Yeah. But now I know that it just, like, I've never felt this tired after... <laughs> And oh, okay. So, <laughs> I think so I, yeah, I think I did not have it. Yeah, but you're on I, like the <clears throat> the downhill of everything, right? Because you told you, us pretty. It's some yeah, days I ago. I tested positive Wednesday. Oh, okay, so I should be like I'm feeling much better than I did Wednesday and Thursday. Probably because I good. slept all day Friday. Yeah, we would text you in a text thread. And- I assumed you were sleeping. I never yeah, said anything I, about I was, it. I was in and out. <laughs> no, I'll tell you what. Plane actually started to assume. Oh, this is good. Share that it. Yeah. Share it with our listeners. He texted me aside and said, I'm worried that the person answering with Donovan's phone is no longer Donovan. <laughs> because you're answering with pretty serious irregularity. And we kind of started floating like an evil doppelganger <laughs> scenario. Um, so so it was, you know, thank you for providing us an excuse to talk about Twin Peaks, The Return, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, you had some typos going on, which is very unlike you. And we were, yeah, I was, no, like, I was just like, I'm starting to I think that's not Donovan. <laughs> Guys, it's our last Dilly Bar. Last one. We only Summer's have one more. Donovan, will you, check your, will you check the freezer over there and make sure we only have one left? No, I checked earlier. Okay. <laughs> you got a COVID Dilly Bar? Yeah, well, it, it will be wrapped in COVID. I didn't cough on it or anything. He just put, used touches to cool my gloves. fever brow. Ships with gloves. <laughs> he uh, he's kind of dousing in Lysol before he sends it. Don't worry. <laughs> you, guys we we were, you guys remember when we were wiping down our groceries? I do. That was just sad. Remember how like everyone like we kept doing things like that for a while, even after the science was like, you probably don't need to do that, guys. But it's like, no, it makes us feel safe. <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> I remember distinctly wiping down groceries. Okay. Last Dilly Bar. <laughs> summer's, summer's over. Summer's in. Cue up John Prine here. Oh, man. Listener of the week. I'm going to give it to... Uh, I picked this one. Is it? Is it Nick Saban? It's not Nick Saban. It's recent he's father. Good, he's such a good listener. Why don't you ever... Well, he, he has so many accolades. He doesn't need a Dilly Bar. <laughs> you know what I mean? Recent father, he manages to be a dad, host uh, kind of a new, a fairly new podcast with the Alabama Take, and he gives us, plus it gives me an opportunity to set up his uh, his and my betting column that's coming next week. This week, right? Wait, this this week. If you listen yeah. on Tuesday. Yeah. T.D. Wood. Sorry. I'm so excited. Which gives y'all an opportunity to queue up some uh, some Notre Dame hot takes. They're winning it all, right? Is that where you're going with this, or or is it Vandy I, I, hot takes? Is it? We oh, yeah. do it he have some good Notre Dame hot takes. He will, yeah, he will. Yeah. He, it, his his show will release before hours, but if you go back and listen to Taking on Sports, I bet he has talked about some Notre Dame. He doesn't. Already. He doesn't seem like he would suffer suffer Notre Dame fools very easily. From my memory of living with TD in college, uh, no, I don't <laughs> think he. he Watch he's real laid like back. A, but Watching that a, game, all I could think about. Was, oh, I'm sorry, Plan. I keep it. No, go ahead. I didn't have much to say. All, all I can think about was like, okay, like they said, like thirty something thousand Notre Dame fans went over, or maybe it was twenty thousand. I don't remember. I'm like, okay, that's a, sure. Like that's, that's a lot. You know, like you blow a bunch of money and and get drunk in Dublin and then see a terrible football game. Like that's par for the course. But Navy had like eight thousand people do that. Like eight thousand people. What did they expect? They got exactly what they should have expected. Yeah. But like, what are you? Why are you paying like for a bad time vacation? I don't get it. 
I mean, maybe they were already, these are people that traveled from the U.S. to see it. That's my understanding. These are not like, I was already stationed in Europe and took an easy jet flight to double the speed of Yeah. I'm in the Navy. <laughs> Makes more sense to me. Right. Hey, I do have a question for Adam and Natalie. This was a sincere question I had on my mind, and I thought I'd hold it till today just in case it came up. Uh, you guys have traveled to England, like, recently, in the last month. I think since we did this show last, yeah. Exactly, yeah. You missed an episode because I think you were traveling, maybe. That's neither here nor there, but my question is, you traveled inter- internationally. How much time do you need as a football player to get over the jet lag in order to play a, a solid game? What, what's I have your, no idea how they Did do you think this. about that at all? Yeah, I, I did because in Sorry, soccer, it's a huge factor because they have international breaks throughout the season, which they take one week off of their game at the weekend, which allows the national teams to then play games in that two weeks because freeing up one weekend gives them two weeks. Does that make sense? Yes. Because you does. get the what would be the build up to a game and then what's after it. So, so they kind of uh, need if it. If you are British and you play in the Premier League, then that's great. You don't have to go anywhere. But if you are, say, an American, like our probably best player right now, Pulisic, plays in Italy, he would have to go from italy all the way to i mean they've played games in colorado in the middle of the season california in the middle of the season i really don't know how they deal with it uh these notre dame guys would have been dealing with a six hour five hour probably six for them because they're from the midwest right i think it'd be five from where i am right at because i think indianapolis is there's some weird thing that happens when you're traveling from Chicago back to here, like you go into Eastern for a bit. Okay, it doesn't yeah, make Indi- a lot of sense. Indianapolis isn't Eastern, so maybe Notre Dame is too. Right. Uh, anyway, five or six hours. I think they are traveling in the best possible conditions on a charter flight and eating good food and getting the exercise when they need to get it and blah blah blah. But being in shape already, right? Yeah, I think like when we went over this time, it was interesting because I've I've gone over for music before and like played shows before and been up late at night here and then gone and it was very hard to adjust over there. Whereas this time I was basically living the farmer life until we went. So I was already waking up at like 5, 5.30 anyway. And it was super easy going over there and coming back was pretty tough. Natalie, so, did, was jet lag pretty like bad for you this weekend? It would be, it would be pretty brutal, I would think. But huh. they're young; they'll recover. Nat, did you have a lot of jet lag issues? I had zero jet lag issues this time. Really? Um, yeah. Did you um, did you do something like? Did you have a strategy to attack it or something? Well, I told myself when we got there, like I know I cannot sit down. Definitely can't lay down. <laughs> And if I'm, if I need to be standing, moving, talking, or eating, uh-huh. or it's not going to work. I cannot be still, cannot be quiet. And so we, that's what we did until we stayed out pretty late. Came in, got out a good night's sleep, good night's sleep. Uh, woke up the next morning, uh, purged some of the things that were consumed the night before, and then I was oh. fine for the rest of the trip. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah, uh, yeah. You gotta, you gotta stay moving. The thing that got me was on the way back. I there was a thunderstorm at like three in the morning or something. Uh, our first night back, and the dogs woke me up, and immediately my brain was like, "Well, it's already nine a.m., ten a.m. in London." So, and then my body followed suit, and I was awake, and that's that's what got me. I think if. Was Natalie got a good night's sleep that first night back? I would have been fine otherwise. That that crippled me a bit. Um, that sounds intense. Blaine, I, I, I've never never experienced jet lag. I, I think about this question you raised not just because of the Dublin game. I think about it every time Hawaii plays. Yeah, that's me too. Re- yeah. That's just their reality. <laughs> yeah, well, that's a, that's another fine one because they played in Nashville last night. Yeah. They played. Yeah, they, they were they were like. And was in in the game right seven hours away from a, a time difference, something like that. It's crazy. Yeah. And they, I mean, how much time on the plane is not a good place for a body to recover. You know? <laughs> uh, yeah. 
I really don't know how they do it. And I, I wonder about it every year with the NFL games in London. And now they're doing one in Munich as well Frankfurt. or Berlin? Frankfurt. Germany, yeah. Germany, yeah. for sure. And are they doing another one in Mexico City? I don't know. That was Did they ever end up playing that game? Because the That's one that question. was slated to be played was... Was that a COVID the Rams thing? and the Chiefs, but there was like torrential downpours or something that made the field in Mexico oh, almost oh, unplayable. Oh, oh. Okay. And so well, they shifted and played it to the Coliseum, which ended up being like one of the best regular season games in recent memory. That's, yeah. Huh. Yeah, these are – I always think about this kind of stuff. I always think about the intangibles, the things you can't really measure. Musicians Although are uh, – We're getting I better at measuring – those I things. know a lot of musicians who study like NBA sleep patterns. That's right. Because they similarly, that's probably the sport where they have to move the most and have late nights. And, you know, the NBA players swear by the nap between shoot around and the game. It's just an interesting, I don't know how you calm yourself down enough to, before going in like an arena full of people to take a nap, but they do it. Yeah. I would like to know. Uh, no one's watched Ahsoka but me, right? I watched it. Both both episodes. Yeah, I caught up on it. We're gonna we're gonna go keep it spoiler free, but this will be our our YouTube special stuff, not on the real audio. If you're watching it, what do you think, Odwin? Just and we gotta keep it spoiler free because I, I bet Natalie and Adam are gonna end up watching it. It's. I, uh, I think it's that like my Wars general canon. impression from the first two episodes was that I need to go back in time <laughs> to either 2014 or 2008 and give a damn about any of these other shows that are being referenced. <laughs> well, the reviews back then said it was kid stuff until like the third or fourth episode or something. Yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I've just never watched. I've never watched Clone Wars where Ahsoka's from. Not really. I've seen one or two. The episodes. little movie? I, no, the the TV show. I guess she's <laughs> in the movie too, isn't she? I forgot about the movie. Yeah, yeah, there's a Clone Wars movie, I think, that starts... I forgot about it. And then they spun the TV show out of that. That's show. Right. right. Now, I've seen that movie like three or four times. Oh, Don't ask me it. why. Don't ask me why. I'll tell you why. You want to know why? Here's why. Speaking of sleep patterns, <laughs> I had this bad habit for like four weeks straight where I would pop an ambient and watch that movie and forget I watched that movie <laughs> and then turn around the next week and watch it again <laughs> under the under the medicine of ambient and uh I'd be like oh yeah I watched this and then I'd, same thing four weeks in a row so I've watched it like four times it's silly kind of stupid ish mm -hmm. I don't know stupid seems harsh but I mean it's real basic yeah it's kind of kind of stupidly basic and then I've, I've never seen any Rebels, which apparently this now, is... those are supposedly like top-notch things. Almost a direct sequel to it, Yeah, is my understanding. That that's what, oh. But I, I don't know enough about it, so I feel like I'm dropped in without really caring. It brings the, the question up that uh, it was probably go, going to be impossible to make this series without making viewers feel like they need to have watched other shows and, and get that lore under their belts. But my takeaway is that Ahsoka did it fairly entertainingly well. And this is what happens when your mythos, your canon gets so vast. We're seeing it a little bit with Marvel. Like you can't really enjoy a certain show or movie without having seen at least a couple others. Roy Wood Jr. has a great bit about this where... He says he's going to see Atman 3, and somebody says, well, have you seen this and this and this? And he said, I thought the only prerequisite for Ant-Man 3 was Ant-Man 1 and 2. <laughs> and now y'all are telling me to do homework. Uh, this manages to feel like it's a piece of something else that I'm missing while keeping me entertained with its visuals and its story that hasn't been told. That's interesting. Like I was mostly entertained by the visual, the, the I'm sorry, by the visuals and the action, but I honestly like there were big chunks where I'm like, I don't know who Ezra is, I don't know who Sabine is, 
Boy, they wanted to put a lot I, of importance on Ezra, didn't they? Yeah, and I'm like, I don't, like, this is so important. But, like, the, the map, when she's, like, messing, fiddling with the map, I'm like, just unlock the damn thing already, all right? Like, like just... <laughs> I, we I don't know, know you're gonna. Maybe, maybe I yeah. have COVID brain, but I was feeling very impatient no. with this show. No, that was I, that's how I felt too with the map. I, I kept thinking they need to just get through it. Uh, it's an example of a piece of IP where they've managed to drop you into the middle of something without feeling too horribly messed out. Because I think some of this stuff is kind of new for everyone. Okay. Um, probably. And I wrote Natalie. And do you think Marvel does a good job of this? It's kind of hard for us to tell, I guess. But does Marvel do a good job of? If you haven't seen this or this, you'll be okay watching a new thing? Uh, yes and no. I think they probably do. From from the reviews of people that I know that have seen Ahsoka, I think Marvel's a little bit easier because I think oftentimes the frustration with Marvel is that the people that have done the homework are like, why didn't you... You, you made us do this, and now you didn't put it in. Oh, Whereas yeah. everybody that I've heard about Ahsoka has said, oh, if you haven't watched Clone Wars, if you haven't watched Rebels, you're you're going to be lost. Which, you know, I'm happy to do home. I'm, I'm kind of thinking about, do I want to invest in Ahsoka? And it's like, I've already put the time in with Marvel, <laughs> and that's still pretty current. One, I don't know that I have time to do homework that was 10 years ago. And also, it was 10 years ago. Yeah. Like, I don't remember Algebra. I don't want to do this. Marvel is almost ingrained in our culture. Like, oh, you're going to know who Spider-Man is. You know Captain right. America. You've seen the t-shirts at Target or whatever. Um, Ahsoka, you you would have had to had your finger on the pulse of Star Wars 10 years ago, like you're saying. I mean, it's, it's going to be hard. I kind of liked it, though. Donovan, did you like it? I'm still making up my mind. I'll probably keep re-watching it. Like, there's some stuff about it that I find appealing just because I like the setting. Like, I like yeah. the that area that that Mandalorian's been exploring. But we'll see. And I'm I'm a little. I'll, I'll admit I'm a little. So I read. You know, they they're bring they're they're teasing Thrawn right coming back, and I never yes. saw the TV shows, but I did read the the books back when I was. 12 or 13 that so did I. originally introduced yeah heir to the empire and all that and i yeah, I, I, I read one enjoying of them. them so i'm kind of interested to see what they'll do with him i can remember being a kid right after i watched return of the jedi and wanting more and realizing i wasn't going to get any more yeah. and i started picking <laughs> yes. up these books and i read the one uh, so it's kind of interesting they're going to use him as a character after all these years yeah they, i mean they're not great but they're not terrible either as far that's, as Star Wars, yeah, if I can go. remember, I don't, I don't remember that far back, but it seems that seems about right. The, uh, there's one character that gets a very cartoon esque introduction. I thought that was kind of silly. Mm -hmm. I bet you know what I'm talking about, but I won't say much more. So there you go, Ahsoka. I don't know. Could get better. Uh, the 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 villains and the What's going on with them? They're they're trying to pack in a lot of backstory type mythos. Maybe I think it's going to be interesting to see if if I just want to know like if they're going to tell me what those people are up to in very plain terms, like just lay it out. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like here's yeah. what's here's what's going on. Yeah. And I won't say too much more than that. Anyway, uh, let's get into our real show. Our audio version, I should say. It's, it's all real show. It's us. We're here. Back from a break. It's all of us. Uh, if you head to the Alabama Takes YouTube channel, there's a YouTube playlist with uh, Taking It Down. And you can click on it and see uh, what we have to offer. We've got, like, audio only. Just has, like, an image of our logo. And then you have, you can watch this video version, which is us talking to you in a way. Uh, the YouTube version with video has a bonus. So, bonus talk this week was Ahsoka. Tune it into it. Uh, our sister podcast, We Are Star Wars, will definitely have more coverage on Ahsoka. We just gave some real cursory thoughts on it. So, Bob Barker died. Any, Who? any cold... 
<laughs> any cultural connections to you guys there? I it love seems like everybody's right. posting like the my companion on sick days as a child, you know, or I watched this with my grandparents. Yeah. Like I must have seen it because I can remember him being like unless I'm completely insane. Like in there like, oh hey, spaying and your animals, right? He ended the yeah. show. Yeah, okay. yeah. I like I can remember that. But I like I don't remember watching an a second of the price is right. Really? Really? Yeah, I don't, I can't Do remember watching it at all. Cultural touchstones of like, like when people joked that of course he died at ninety nine because he didn't want to hit a hundred and bust. Oh no, I got the. I understand the rules. I just I don't really like. I must have seen it. I just do not remember know, seeing it ever. Even like the games get referenced in pop culture pretty often. Yeah, yeah. I have no idea. Oh huh. man, he was such a good host. He was, and you know what? He was fantastic in Happy Gilmore. Yeah, he was funny. He's funny on Price is Right. He was yeah. great times. I Adam someone... read the news yesterday, and he turned and looked at me, and he said, I'm going to be honest. I thought he was already dead. <laughs> I, I heard someone else say that. I, I definitely get I definitely get that, right? There's sometimes I'll read an obituary, and I'm like, wow, he lived 35 more years after I thought he did. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you the big one for me. I have no idea when Richard Pryor died. No clue. Like I thought he was dead long before he died. <laughs> what year did he die? Hell, I don't. I don't know. I just don't know. Is he dead? That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think he's dead. I think he died much later than you would have expected. You know, the one uh, celebrity death that's that's happened since we were together is the man who voiced Dale Gribble on King of the Hill. That's true. Yeah. I lost him. Genuinely bummed about that one. What? What? How did he die? Do you know? I'm not sure they released it. I mean, he was... How old would he have been? Early 60s? Something like that? I think he was early 60s, wasn't he? Yeah. Well, it's a shame. we'll get it. We'll get into our first bit here. We're here to talk about HBO Series, <clears throat> HBO series which is streaming on Max, of course. How To with John Wilson, airing its third and final season of uh, five or six episodes. I think it's six total, but five have aired. So we're almost in the end. The next week will be its last. Uh, how to describe this show? Can't. Yeah. You really can't. Donovan, you want to take a run at this introduction of, of what How To with John Wilson really is? Oh, gosh. You know, at a very, it's um, kind of found footage. Gosh, what am I trying almost. to say? It's, it's almost like a shaggy dog story where mm. he'll take, like, How To, something very mundane, right? And he'll just follow it. But he'll, like, follow it to, like, its logical or illogical conclusion. Yeah, very illogical. And so it it seems as simple as like how to park a car, but it ends up being like, you know, during that same one, he's like, when I had to figure out how to get my nose right, I've got to, you know, taste wines. <laughs> like yeah. it's just, I would say it's kind of a part of the fun of, which makes it hard to describe, but part of the fun of it is like, you have no idea what he's going to do. Yeah. Or where he's, he's going to take go. it. Just, you know, just surrender. Never just asked. enjoy the ride. I did not think the first three episodes of this final season were quite as good maybe because i know what to expect in a way I natalie knew... has thoughts <laughs> go, go ahead well Jump we've only there. seen the first two episodes okay but i was telling adam before we got on here today was i think it was a mistake of him doing three seasons i mean obviously take the money do your thing no <laughs> no shame in that but like it was first two seasons were clever. They were unexpected. They were fun, and now it's like okay, we get the plot now, and just seems like he's reaching a bit. It used to be like a like okay, I could see where you can make that leap. Now it's, I don't know, it's not it. I thoroughly agree. That's it, it. Felt like a stretch to try to get some of where he lands with the final act of each episode. Those first three, uh, I think episodes four and five were more in the vein of what you wanted from the show. And, and it ended up where he uses something simple, one simple idea to examine 
like differences and acceptance and oddities of life and community uh especially that i think that was the big the fourth episode really did some of those themes i was talking about so the fourth episode's i think where it turns its corner the fifth one is kind of even weird for how to with john wilson so i'm excited for you all to catch up and see the most recent episode i think i would agree with you and natalie I've only seen the first three, so I haven't come to the good one yet. But I, I like I didn't like it. Doesn't have the same like funny surprise that like the first season or so did. Right. I I don't know if I like hated it, but I also agree with both of you. Like, okay, I could see how like this could go on too long. Lost a bit of its charm. I yeah, think there could be and too much of this. Uh. Maybe it's ability to make you empathize with people that you didn't expect to. Uh, that was definitely a strength of the first couple seasons. And he just seems like I'm, I'm more tired of his the shtick by the end of the episodes this season than I was the first couple. Now, on the bright side, there are only six total and... So you guys have seen, everyone here has seen the the one about the restroom. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, if if any listener has not watched this show yet, please don't watch episode one while eating dinner. Because we made that mistake. It's a bad it time was... to fire up the new John Wilson, Horrible. for sure. That's right up there with, uh, at least for me, I watched that episode of Somebody Somewhere while eating dinner. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, was, it, was a momen- it was a momentous choice. Yeah. <laughs> Similar wavelength. And yes. episode episode two is cleaning your ears. Not necessarily a very good one to watch while eating either. Yeah. When that episode started, I almost told Adam, "I'm out. I can't. I can't watch the show anymore. It's all gross." <laughs> yeah, he did go a very gross direction for two. The third one's working out. Gross. Yeah, which could be <laughs> fitness. Does he go work out? Oh yeah. That's good. Yeah, I, I believe so. I think not, he not, needs a, a fitness regimen. Just guessing. Not for a long length of time. Anyway, <laughs> uh, they also, yeah, I, I've, I've got it written here. They seem more disjointed than what he's done with other footage. Um, but I wonder, too, while we were watching it, it was such a perfect COVID show. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, it you was. You know, it was like looking at... Uh, kind of remembering at least where we live. It's like, oh yeah, there are like cities out there and there are other people and here's like a highlight of, again, not to use the word empathetic, but like, you know, people kind of hate each other right now and here's a guy who can is unafraid to find if not commonality, at least he's letting people speak, you know, without too much judgment and even like this, the the How to Clean Your Ears episode where he ends up in that backyard in Jersey where the guy's just firing the the cannon or whatever off on the back of his truck. I mean, I, it just, that felt, it was funny. Everybody's laughing right now, but it, it felt more like spectacle than something that would have happened in the first season. I mean, he all, those first two seasons, the first one maybe especially, he almost hits this modern day transcendentalism type idea of of beauty and absurdity and in nothingness in the mundane yeah and it's not happening this time around and you're right i don't know why it's it's amazing to think i I was thinking during the first well i've seen all the episodes so far and i was just thinking during all of them what's appealing to people outside of new york city because he starts every episode with hello new york and I, I, I guess it just hit me this season. I was like, oh, he's starting every episode with Hello, New York. But here I am in in rural Alabama watching this every episode. Well, like, what's it's America City, you know? Yeah, and we've, we've all been there. But, like, if you've never been there, what would be the appeal? I was just – of the show. Because there's got to be no way to watch. large in the imagination. He's not saying, like, you know – Hello, Cleveland. Hel- Hello, Plano or something like that. <laughs> I don't know. Shots fired, Nat. <laughs> Rude. Uh, it would be great if he just maybe for like the 
second season, third season, maybe do fourth and fifth season, just go film somewhere else. You know? Well, like four no, hours. Yeah, just don't know. Well, I mean, start there. Yeah. And, and unravel that, but nah, maybe not. I'm sure he's got more up his sleeve. I don't know why I think this. I don't know that I've read anything official, but I feel like he's like got, got ideas to do other things. I don't know if y'all can confirm or deny that I've... No, I haven't, I haven't read anything. Feel, I just feel like he's... I don't know. Like I, I said, mean, I'd I mean, be surprised if he doesn't. <laughs> yeah, he seems like a witty, a witty, interesting guy. Uh, did you know he was on Jimmy Kimball? Did you I, say I didn't. Kimball? Did, what did I say? With a, with a B in it? Did I? Probably. Because I, I am a Duncan, and we love mispronouncing <laughs> names and places. <laughs> we love it. Fucking li- love it. That's the most like dad thing I think you've ever done. Oh, oh, Jimmy, Jimmy Kimball. Old Jimmy just, Kimball. Just wait till we have some poor unfortunate person with a with a name that's not just Smith or something. I will do it every time. Um, yes, Jimmy Kimmel. <laughs> Is that it? Anyway, go ever watch he, that Jimmy Campbell show. Yeah, <laughs> the son of a bitch isn't Campbell. What? <laughs> thing like uh, that. Anyway, he references it in the most recent episode, and I, I didn't know he was on there, but it's really funny. Uh, I, I kind of want to go watch the whole segment. Anyway, John Wilson's a quirky guy. How much of his um, voiceover is put on? Does he really stammer awkwardly that much? I do kind of wonder that. I, wonder I hope that he a, does, because it's annoying as hell. It's annoying in the third season, but it was not annoying to me in the first and the second. Because I was just like, "Oh come on, man! Surely you've you can edit." <laughs> yeah, obviously. I mean, that's the thing is, I know it's supposed to have like a lo-fi quality to the whole thing, and like even like the microphone that he has people talk into is, yeah. But yeah, yeah, it's it like is. a very uh, late two thousands, early twenty tens kind of yeah yeah vibe, and it's. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm not. If, if that's genuinely what he, I'm with you. Like he could, he could edit if he's not a great public speaker. Uh, but he seems to be leaning into the stutter more. He's yeah. into mumblecore. Yeah, very exactly. much. It is kind of funny though. Sometimes when he tries to think of a word in the middle of saying another word, sometimes that can be pretty funny. Yeah. You're working out on a uh, my my. You're working out or whatever he does. It's it can be funny. Uh, the fifth episode, he, I'll, I, we might have to talk to y'all more about the fifth and sixth episodes because I don't know what the sixth is going to hold, but the fifth one, he kind of sort of gets away from something he's been doing. Let's take a quick little break. Tell you what's going on with the Alabama Take and other podcast in our network, and we're going to talk the Challenge USA. We haven't talked the Challenge in a in a minute on here and we love it and we hope you love it so back in a second so let's dive in in the words of bill simmons it's america's fifth major sport challenge diving? what's that now <laughs> say diving cliff diving, diving. <laughs> not not per bill simmons we're going to discuss the <laughs> challenge colon usa which is on cbs apparently every sunday and thursday but I end up watching it streaming on Paramount Plus. I think it's about halfway through the season now. With you get your older seasoned competitors, you'd probably recognize in the mix with some people from various other CBS reality shows. And my question to Natalie to kick this off, other than the obvious, right? We get the obvious. What's keeping this show any different than the Amazing Race Survivor? Big Brother, or any other CBS reality series I might be forgetting. It's making it different? Yeah, yeah, because they've they've crammed so many of these people from those shows in there. What do you think is, like, still keeping it the challenge and keeping you returning? Oh, I'm only coming back to this show. I did not watch the first CBS challenge. No, and neither. I will not watch a CBS challenge unless it involves MTV characters. Okay, me too. Same. Um, and I wasn't going to watch any of it until I did watch um, the World Champions season because I, I knew they were pairing up the champions with challengers. So I watched it, into it, 
it's fine. It's not as good. It's not as good as the MTV version. I don't think it ever will be. No. Um, you know, the Survivor, Big Brother folks, they bring a different sort of drama, which isn't quite as fun. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think this show, it's still the challenge in in mm-hmm. essence on paper because that's the game they're playing and TJ is um, doing his job really well. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it it needs MTV characters. Otherwise, it's just a boring, it's just another boring CBS show. 100%. I want to jump in before Adam. I know he's chomping at the bit to talk about this because he and I almost almost ruined our podcast fodder last night via text. But that world, what was it, world champions? World champions. Yeah. That one was okay. It had some yeah, depth. It was fun. This one is so much better. I'm going to argue that the Challenge USA Season 2, which is what's on, is so much better than that World Championship. By, by leaps and bounds. The World Championship I thought was pretty forgettable. And uh, Natalie answered her question. I was going to ask her that she she said she won't watch a CBS Challenge. But what, what's changed her mind is that they've roped in the vets that we like to watch. And I think that's where I was. When I saw them on there, I was like, okay, when well, am I going to watch this? Am I not? And I found out Natalie and Adam were already on it, so it didn't take me much to catch up. I mean, I, I binge these in a way that I can, meaning I watch one every night until I was caught up. That's, my, that's a binge for me. Adam, you and I are digging this, aren't we? I am, for sure. Yeah, I dig it. It's a uh, twice a week little hit of the challenge, and it's been. It's, it's when was the the last MTV challenge on air? Does anybody remember offhand? November. Has it been that long? I think so. Because mm. because there would have been the world championship on. Well, I watched it on Paramount, so that would have been in the spring. So, and there was a All Stars season. Has that been too long? It's a lot like watching an MTV episode on Fast Forward. Yeah, it is. And I think the format is kind of imitating what already happens in the modern era of the challenge, which is you have some franchise players, if you will, uh, fighting against the masses to make it to basically the point where we're at now in the season where they can start to not just fight a numbers game, you know? Like, you're always rooting for Wes and Bananas yes. Yes. to make it through. Yeah. At least me. Like, even if you have, like, one of these, uh, what are they, are they just calling them? Challenge vets, challenge Vet. whatever. Uh, you don't have to like all of them, but I think all, all MTV Challenge fans want all of them that can to make it to the back half of the season, right? Which is yeah. already kind of like how the main show goes every time they bring in a lot of new people. And these yeah. new people, I got to say, are decent on TV, you know, which is not always true with some of the rookies they bring in to the main show. It's really fascinating to me that the vets have run the show for the past five seasons. Go back as far as you probably can. The vets have run it. They've controlled it. They got rid of the rookies. <clears throat> It would kind of irritate me as a viewer, like, oh, man, they're just running the show. What, what's, what's the point? This season, they're not. But the rookies, if you want to call them rookies, I know they've been on some other things. The rookies are now kind of, are, they have a little control. It's a little more balanced. And I'm angry that they have control. <laughs> as a viewer, I'm like, I don't want them to have control. Why, why are they? That <laughs> both of us have a pretty finely tuned sense of what we think is like fair and just in the game. <laughs> Maybe. I don't I think know. Cause like what they're winning right now. Cause when I said this to you in text, I think you, you were quick to agree that they feel all this confidence because it's just a pure numbers game. Right. It's not actually mm. based in, mm-hmm. it's like Fessy winning like a hall brawl. It's like, of right. course, of course. Yeah. That's just, you, that's you, just you, math you, and physics. Uh, while I don't want the vets running the whole show, I don't want the rookies running the whole show, I want 
Yeah, just this fairness, just this balance of the scale where it's like, I don't know who, what's going to happen. Yeah. I think that's what it amounts to. And it is a, it, the Challenge USA this season has done a very great job of, I don't know what's going to happen. I've got to tune in. Um, I will say this most recent episode, we're all caught up. Yes. Okay. This most recent well, episode. We'll, we'll be one behind when this comes out. But That's true. That's true. Yeah. So, yes, because we'll watch tonight. We record on Sunday. The one drawback of this most recent episode is the two people who went down to elimination was Alyssa and Cassidy? remind me. Say, was there Cassidy? Say, yeah. Yeah. That, that was a, and, and they don't have a, production does not have a lot of control over certain aspects of this, which is why you watch <laughs> it. It's a sport. You know, you watch Vandy in Hawaii because you don't know if Vandy's going to win by seven or 30. <laughs> and because you're a sicko who's got to make rent, you know, like Donovan. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> Don't pay for itself. That's such a good joke. I love it. But so what's, what's, you got, wait, you, what's the joke? They, <laughs> it's he's not even a got a mortgage this year. It's not even. That <laughs> it's not a joke. It's just funny. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so Cassidy and Alyssa went down to elimination. I couldn't even remember who went down to elimination for late season or mid season. That's not really the matchup you want down there. That should have been the first one, but. I, did, I never know what's going to happen. And I just keep tuning in. And, man, I'm so glad. The magic Natalie, of the hopper. It's the magic of the hopper. It is, because uh, Alyssa only had the one vote yes. in there. And she's yeah. still... But, see, I think the that matchup is great because these are two people who thought that they were in control of the game to a certain degree. And now that... You know, it's what Bananas used to always make fun of Wes for. He's like... It, his strategy works great early in the game because you go around and you, you tell everybody, I got you and you and you, and we're all buddies. But then you can't take everybody to a final, right? So yeah. Yeah. now the implosion is happening and the challenge vets have done it so many times. They know when to like step back and just stay out of fight. But you're right, the, the surprises and the way that it's on fast forward for it to shift so quickly from rookie control to then Josh of all people being the one who kind of gets I mean, the bets back on track. He ran that, that vote. He yeah. ran, ran it. That's great. It was, he's coming into his own, maybe a little still. He's, he's fun to have on the show. You'd never root for him to win, but you do want him on there. I'm that way about Wes, except that sometimes I'll root for Wes. But I always want him on there. Like you see on newscast with the bing, uh, bingo type hopper, like okay. where they press the button and the air will shoot you a ball up. So that's what they've got with their names on it. And depending on how many times you get voted in, is how many times your names will appear on a ball. So you don't, you know, you could get six votes but still not get thrown into elimination. Uh-huh. The hopper they also has... vote by taking one of these balls, whatever, yeah. whoever's name on it, and putting it in like a bank teller. <laughs> Drive through and shoot, There's a which is really tube. <laughs> yeah. 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 Did, did you notice? It. Did you notice the first time they all went to do that in the first episode when they all went to vote for the first time? Half of them jumped, like they were startled by how quickly the thing like. Like, have you never been to a bank? Be loud because <laughs> oh, Alyssa plugged her ears yeah. when yeah. she voted this last week. I saw that. Uh, it with the hopper. It's really a shame they couldn't just. Maybe pay out some some of Sir Shirley Jackson's estate stuff and <laughs> called it the Challenge Lottery and just really <laughs> thrown it into that arena. You know what I mean? That would have been awesome. I want to give you I'm going to give you some guys and I want Adam and Natalie to just tell me real quick opinions. Uh, I'll start with vets. So Josh, Is, are we calling him a vet now? Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. I I just think it's I think For it's sure. very interesting that there are return challenge players Mm -hmm. that are on like team big brother or team Mm -hmm. survivor that aren't considered vets. But I was really glad in the last episode to see most of them playing as vets. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think he made the turn this season. Yeah. So what you got on Josh? Like, dislike? So annoyed. I just need Josh to grow up. And I think he is. (laughs) Hey, he hasn't cried this season. I don't even mind the crying. It's just the the I do. The yelling, the just like immature, I got my feelings hurt. 
and now you're all like get your feelings hurt feel your feelings no nothing wrong with that but like don't make it a thing here's another adam one. hates criers uh, here's another so pj <laughs> that's true he's quitters he made fun of josh for crying too he's made a joke because he yes. was crying over something stupid right <laughs> right that's what i mean if you're crying because you're genuinely hurt or you gave it your all and you came up a little short that's fine but mm-hmm, mm-hmm. josh crying is not fine <laughs> okay Corey. you mean teen teen mom got him he, he's done He's got, he has not, he has messed up this season big time. I usually like Corey to an extent. Yeah. But his whole, like, want to be different with Team Youngblood. Now he's Team whatever the hell. He's got a, he, for some reason, will not accept his fate as a vet, even though it would benefit him so much. He just always, he, he's always going to be a standout different guy. And it's not, it doesn't make for a good game. I always kind of like him. Yeah, it just seems... against him. I just think he's bad at this game. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But he makes it far enough to where I'm used to seeing him mid-season still. Um, because we've solely watched MTV productions almost, almost solely, I'll give you a couple of newcomer names. Desi. Which one's Desi? Mm. See the Amazing Race guy. Wait, is he the guy? Black lady who guy has that's... excellent biceps. <laughs> oh, God, girl! I thought it was this other guy. No, <laughs> Desi. Else. Real pretty See? girl. Uh, she's, like, she's, yeah, she seems real strong. She was, she did really well in the the hanging thing, right? Mm-hmm. She was one of the. Yeah, she she seems like she could be good. I'm a fan of her. I hope she's on more. All right, and and I'll give you one more, and you can uh, uh, laugh away, Dusty. Wait, is this the guy I was thinking about? Which one's Dusty? I don't so know. So Dusty who. was, he, he's the one who claims banana, it, bananas yeah. is his hero, and yeah. yet they look similar in age. It's kind of funny. I like him. Yeah, I, I think it's do great. Too. I, I yeah, think that's like watching any one of us get to be on the challenge. And right, like right, right. He's There's, so stoked. He was yeah. crying when bananas defected. Was so, he? he? He did cry, yeah. Oh, he, I like Dusty. It's funny in a not so funny sort of way that it's the Challenge USA and they're playing in Croatia. TJ's Certain. favorite location. Yeah, TJ Is made it? that call. I'm sure. Oh, okay. Yeah, he uh, he said that at the beginning. There's not a show on TV that consistently makes me hold my breath like this one. I'll be sitting there watching TV and realize I haven't moved a muscle or taken a breath in like 30, 45 seconds during elimination, especially. Oh, I find myself doing the like when you're playing when you're you know you're a kid and you're playing Mario Kart and you're yeah. leaning with your controller. Yes, I do that yes, while yes, watching yes. the challenge. Yeah, that's why we that's why we love it. That's why we talk about it. Uh, going back to Desi really quickly, she made a salient point that the hangups you have in life are the same hangups that are gonna hurt you in the challenge. I thought that was like really ph- philosophical, but also probably true. I've never been on the challenge, but it felt true. She seems like she, uh, that could come back to bite her. Not playing with a little bit of the, the tough skin, the facade. You know, like I think yeah. the best challengers know that they're kind of like putting on a mask when they go into the house a little bit. Yes. And you don't think, think she's doing the- that or she's not doing it enough? I think she's a little, uh, yeah, she could do, she could do it more because she could be really good, but she's got to let go of some of both the, her allies that are probably not all that helpful and just, you know, be a badass. Is she the one, is she the pageant? She's got a pageant mm-hmm. background? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And she's okay. also in like newscasting or, or yeah, sports casting. Yeah. She feels very, like we don't, act, we haven't actually met her yet. Yeah. I can see There's that. something about all of her interactions. It's like she very, cl- very clearly knows how to present herself, and she's still doing that. Yeah, I can see that. Definitely. I mean, it's still on CBS, and there's still some people on the season who don't seem to be deserving or getting any screen time. Like Alyssa S. If I say that name, does a picture even emerge? Only because there were two Alyssas, and I knew that she was not the one that annoyed me. <laughs> I mean, I could not have told you what Cassidy looked like until this last episode, and she got put in elimination, so. Yeah. Still still a little of that, but it's, 
this season has been so much better than the world championships in South Africa. That was so forgettable. I don't want to steal possibly one of your questions just while we're talking about different personalities. I'm pretty done. I'm kind of done. I'm on my I'm on my descent. <laughs> we made it this far without mentioning Polly, which is very I was interesting. Just about to say okay, that. go ahead. Well, I hated him so much and thought mm-hmm. that he ruined the show. Like he's kind of like a I guess somehow he's more toxic than Turbo. You know, but, like he, but he wasn't this season, right? But he, the personal growth, like Josh has exp- obviously experienced some, but Polly was like a different dude. But yeah, he mentioned cool therapy a couple of times, and you could tell yeah. it paid off. Yeah, that was neat. That was neat. That was. It's going it, to be a fun year with Polly back, seeing Polly back and better, uh-huh. and just like more entertaining than ever before. Yeah. And then knowing Kara's going to be back on All Stars. Like, this is going to be a good year, guys. It's going to be a good challenge year. We might bring it up again. You know us. We love the challenge. I'm not so sure how many of our listeners dig into the challenge as much as we do, but you should. It's still fun. Uh, give it a try. Give it a try. That's the end of our episode this week. Here's the deal. If, you, if you'll leave us a review in Apple, we'll I'll read it on, on the air. And you can watch the video version on YouTube. You can just listen to audio in any podcast app, and we appreciate all of it. All four of us are back. All four of us are at least alive. We're not healthy. <laughs> right, Donovan? I've got a major you know, sinus infection. sometimes. <laughs> Donovan's got COVID for the first time ever. Adam's got... They're going to saw into Adam next week. My goodness. We're, we're it's dead, true. We're it's dead and walking. Hey, thanks, everybody, for listening. Thanks for my, my, three, my three buddies here. See everybody later.